Section one. In this section, you'll hear a conversation between a student and the coordinator of the student service center. First, you have some time to read questions one to three. Now, listen to the conversation and answer questions one to three. Hi, sit down, please. How can I help you? Thank you. I'm a student in the sociology faculty. I'm coming to ask for some information about renting a room in the college or near the campus. My name is Sarah. Yes, Sarah. How long have you been here in Sydney? You are not new, I suppose. No, I'm in my second year. I came to Sydney eighteen months ago from Korea. Where are you living now? I live with my aunt in my cousin's room. It's pretty nice to live with my relatives, but unfortunately, my cousin has finished his term and is returning from Britain next week. I have to rent a room for myself.、Mm, yes, it sounds a little unfortunate, but I suppose it's a good chance for you to have a deeper understanding to real world. I hope so. Well, what sort of thing are you looking for?、Uh, what we provide ranges from shared flat to homestay. And of course, we have houses with gardens, if you like. No, the house with a garden is obviously out of my price range. Shared flat is not bad, but I prefer a homestay. I enjoy the feeling of living with the family. When do you plan to begin the rent? Next week, you just said. No, my cousin is arriving by next week, so I hope to move out by this weekend. This weekend, okay. The main area we deal with is around the university. Around the university, aha.、Uh -huh. Do you have anything near the northern gate of the university? You know, the sociology faculty is near the northern gate. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions four to ten. Now listen to the conversation and answer questions four to ten. Yes.、Uh, what sort of price are you thinking of? Well, could you give me some idea? You know, I have no experience of renting a room. I don't know what price is reasonable, but I hope it's not over three hundred dollars. I see. Usually, the homestay ranges from a hundred and eighty dollars per month. Only a hundred and eighty dollars. Yes, to three hundred and fifty dollars, depending on a number of different factors. What does it depend on? Well, obviously, the quality of the house, the facilities, and extra services. Oh, I don't care about the quality very much, as long as it's clean. As to the facilities, I want the room with the separate bathroom. Kitchen isn't a necessity because I don't want to cook by myself. I hope to have meals with the family if possible. Okay, let me check the files.、Mm, yes, I think this one might suit you. It's a family house with two vacant bedrooms. How about the owner of the house? I mean, is it a family or?、Uh, according to the file, it is a retired lady. She wants to find college students as tenants. That's great. What's the condition of the rooms? The bigger bedroom is furnished and with a bathroom, and the rent is three hundred and twenty dollars per month. The smaller one charges two hundred and fifty dollars. It is furnished too, but without bathroom. Oh, three hundred and twenty dollars. It's a bit out of my range, but I think I prefer the bigger one. How about the meals? Well, the rent includes breakfasts and suppers. No lunches, however. You have to buy your lunch. That's no problem. I usually have my lunch in the college cafeteria. And that doesn't cover the water bill and electricity fee, but the laundry is included. Fine. Could you tell me the address? Yes, it's on three two three West Park Road. Let me get that down, three two three. Okay, it's near the university. So when can I have a look at the room? You know, I'm a little pressed for time. The file says the landlady is in every afternoon. So this week, say Friday. Oh, I'm afraid I can't make it then. I have a lecture on Friday afternoon till five thirty. How about Thursday? Okay, that's fine. Would five be okay? Yes, fine. Just come here. Yes, here in the student service office. Oh, before I forget, before moving, you have to pay one month's rent in advance. Really? Oh, I didn't know that before. Could I ask why? As the deposit, you know, in case you damage the property or move out without giving notice. Usually, this doesn't happen, but standing 
in the owner's shoes. Yes, I understand it all. So that's three hundred and twenty dollars. Okay, I'll take the money if I'm satisfied. Well, a word of advice: don't forget to get a receipt when you pay the deposit or rent. Yes, thank you so much. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section two. Section two: The student union is having a meeting to discuss how to help the community. As you listen, complete the summary by writing no more than two words on each line. First, you will have some time to look at questions eleven to fourteen. Now listen carefully and answer questions eleven to fourteen. May I have your attention, please? We're going to start the meeting now. I'm very pleased to see so many people here. You obviously all know that the purpose of this meeting is to discuss how to help the community. Next month, the National Union of Students are running a National Community Week. They've asked us to cooperate in any way we can. The idea is that all students should give up some of their time to help the community. Surely that's what we do in Rag Week. Does that mean we're going to do this sort of thing twice a year? No, not really. The scheme is nationwide. It has two aims: to show the public that students are responsible members of society, and to show students ways in which they can give really practical help to the community. The National Union of Students haven't made any suggestions. They want the students in each area to work out their own schemes, and really, that's the purpose of this meeting: to think up some ideas about the sort of help we can give. Let's discuss now. Any suggestions? It is Saturday morning. A group of students are going to help an old man in the community. As you listen, fill in the gaps numbered fifteen to seventeen. Now you will have some time to look at questions for whether the statements are accurate or not by writing A for an accurate statement, I for an inaccurate statement, or question mark if there is insufficient information. Now look at questions eighteen to twenty. Now listen carefully and answer questions fifteen to seventeen. Where is Milkman Street? Is it far? No, I don't think so. It's somewhere near. Oh, look there. It's just around the corner. What's the number again? Number eight, Mr. Tyler, eight Milkman Street. Careful with those tins of paint. I'll knock. The welfare office said that they'd written to him to tell him we were coming. The curtains are all drawn. It doesn't look as if anyone's at home. He's probably watching TV. He's a long time coming. He'll be pleased to see us, I'm sure. Go away! I don't want any. Hello, Mr. Tyler. Is it Mr. Tyler? Isn't it? We're the student volunteers. Engineers? I don't want any engineers. I've got a gas fire. No, Mr. Tyler. We've come to do your decorating. No, thank you. Not today. Perhaps you could open the door, Mr. Tyler. We've come to paint your kitchen. Well, why didn't you say so? We can come again tomorrow if it's inconvenient now. No, no, no. It's all right. Don't stay there at the front. Come round the back. I never use the front door. Only the back. Now listen and answer questions eighteen to twenty. Who is it? Is the student volunteer? Hello, you're the student volunteer, aren't you? Yes. Good afternoon. The welfare office told me to come here. My name is Diana. Yes, they wrote to me about this. Come in, please. There. Isn't that nice and comfy? That's lovely, dear. And warm too. It's really cosy in here. I wish I could get about a bit more, like you young people. I could go out and see my son and my grandchildren. They live in Edinburgh, you know. I don't see them often. My son has got a lot of work. I used to go out to work. That was after my husband died. Never worked when I was married, though. No. No, never. He used to say a woman's place is in the home. Yes, life's like that. I'll just dust these photos. That's him, the one in the middle of the front row. His moustache was lovely. That was taken when he was in the army. He looks very smart. Yes, he was. I can remember it as if it were yesterday. Well, there we are. I want you to read a book to me. You know my eyes are not very good now. Where is the book? It's on my desk. It is Little Dorrit by Dickens. You know the bit I like? It's on page two hundred and one. It describes Little Dorrit's love for her father. Ah、uh, yes, here. She never left him. Nice and comfortable. 
Here, put this shawl around your shoulders. My husband used to read this book to me. She never left him all that night, as if she had done him a wrong which her tenderness could hardly repair. She sat by him in his sleep, at times softly kissing him. That is the end of section two. Now you will have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section three. Section three. You will hear a conversation about a student thesis. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-four. Now listen carefully and answer questions twenty-one to twenty-four. Come in, please. Good afternoon. Oh, I am sorry. Is it Professor Lee's office room? No, it is room six four zero. His new room number is six one four, on the right of this corridor. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Come in, please. Good afternoon, Professor Lee. Good afternoon. Come in, please. I remember our tutorial time is at two o'clock, right? Really? Oh, I am so sorry. I remember it is at half past one. So I, I go to common room to wait for thirty minutes. Okay. No, no, I'm free now. Let's begin. I am so sorry. That doesn't matter. So, how about your work? In fact, Professor Lee, can I get an extension of time to hand in my work? I mean, I hope to extend my thesis deadline. James. You know, extension is usually given only for medical or accident reasons. So, what's your problem? You have a good beginning with your draft, isn't it right? Yes. While I, I'm having too many reading materials to read. Too many? How many? Besides academic journals, I have about fifteen books to read next month. I don't think I can finish them. Oh, darling. You do not need to read them all. What do you mean? I mean, you can choose some parts of these books which can help your work. Really? Could you give me some suggestions? Sure. Now look at questions twenty-five to thirty. Now listen carefully and answer questions twenty-five to thirty. Do you bring your reference book list? Yes, I take it. Let's see. First, the book by Bayer. I think it is really worth reading. Read it all. Yes, the topic of the book is nearly the same field with you. Okay, I'll read Bayer's book. The next author is Oliver. I heard that his argument is very strong, but the book is a little difficult. You are right, but I still recommend you to know about his argument, which will give you a lot of help. Fine. Do you think I should read Billy's book? About Billy, I have to say his work is very good, especially his research method. But you do not need to read it now. Right. The last author is Andrew. How about his book? In my opinion, the one by Andrew says the research findings. I mean, his last part is very excellent, clear, and persuasive. I agree with you. I'm reading the book now. Great. How about others? I suggest you finish these books next month, and then we will talk about others. Okay? Okay. Have you begun your research work? Yes. How are things going? That's okay, except the research method. What's wrong with the method? I have made some interviews. Yes. But I found they couldn't give me the data I need. Who are the interviewees? Some are our classmates, and others are schoolmates. Oh no, James! It's better for you to interview some professionals. Do you think it is better for me to change another research method, such as questionnaire? I don't think you will have enough time to design it and then analyze your research data. That will waste you a lot of time. You're right. And pay attention to your reference. Reference books. No, I mean you should make clearly about what reference books you read, 
and then write them after your thesis. Okay, I will make them clear. Fine. I hope to see your work quickly. I hope too. Thanks for your help, Professor Lee. That's okay. See you next time. See you. This is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section four. Section four. You will hear an extract from a talk given by a lecturer from management department of a university on the topic job satisfaction. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to thirty-six. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to thirty-six. Job satisfaction is how happy an individual is with his or her job. Scholars and human resource professionals generally make a distinction between effective job satisfaction and cognitive job satisfaction. Effective job satisfaction is the overall extent of pleasurable emotional feelings individuals have about their jobs, and is different from cognitive job satisfaction, which is the extent of individual satisfaction with particular facets of their jobs, such as pay, pension arrangements, working hours. And numerous other aspects of their jobs. At its most general level of conceptualization, job satisfaction is simply how content an individual is with his or her job. Effective job satisfaction is usually defined as a one-dimensional, subjective construct representing an overall emotional feeling individuals have about their job as a whole. Hence, effective job satisfaction for individuals reflects. The degree of pleasure or happiness the job in general induces. Cognitive job satisfaction is usually defined as being a more objective and logical evaluation of various facets of a job. As such, cognitive job satisfaction can be one-dimensional if it comprises evaluation of just one aspect of a job, such as pay or maternity leave, or multi-dimensional if two or more facets of a job. Are simultaneously evaluated. Environmental factors. One of the most significant aspects of an individual's work in a modern organization concerns the management of communication demands that he or she encounters on the job. Demands can be characterized as a communication load. Individuals in an organization can experience communication overload and communication underload, which can affect their level of job satisfaction. Communication overload can occur when an individual receives loads of messages in a short period of time, which can result in unprocessed information, or when an individual faces more complex messages that are more difficult to process. Due to this process, given an individual's style of work and motivation to complete a task, when more inputs exist than outputs, the individual perceives. A condition of overload, which can be positively or negatively related to job satisfaction. In comparison, communication underload can occur when messages or inputs are sent below the individual's ability to process them. According to the ideas of communication overload and underload, if an individual does not receive enough input on the job or is unsuccessful in processing these inputs. The individual is more likely to become dissatisfied, aggravated, and unhappy with their work, that leads to a low level of job satisfaction. Now look at questions thirty-seven to forty. Now listen to the second half of the recording and answer questions thirty-seven to forty. Superior subordinate communication. Superior subordinate communication is an important influence on job satisfaction in the workplace. The way in which subordinates perceive a superior's behavior can positively or negatively influence job satisfaction. Communication behavior, such as facial expression, eye contact, vocal expression, and body movement, is crucial to the superior-subordinate relationship. Nonverbal messages play a central role in interpersonal interactions with respect to impression formation, deception, attraction, social influence, and emotional bonding. Individuals who dislike and think negatively about their supervisor are less willing to communicate or have motivation to work. Whereas individuals who like and think positively of their supervisor are more likely to communicate and are satisfied with their job and work environment. A supervisor 
who uses non-verbal immediacy, friendliness, and open communication lines is more likely to receive positive feedback and high job satisfaction from a subordinate. Strategic Employee Recognition Employee recognition is not only about gifts and points. It's about changing the corporate culture in order to meet goals and initiatives and most importantly to connect employees to the company's core values and beliefs. Strategic employee recognition is seen as the most important program not only to improve employee retention and motivation but also to positively influence the financial situation. The vast majority of companies want to be innovative coming up with new products, business models, and better ways of doing things. However, innovation is not so easy to achieve. A CEO cannot just order it and so it will be achieved. You have to carefully manage an organization so that, over time, innovations will emerge. Individual factors, mood and emotions, form the effective element of job satisfaction. Moods tend to be long-lasting, but often weaker states of uncertain origins while emotions are often more intense, short-lived, and have a clear object or cause. Positive and negative emotions were also found to be significantly related to overall job satisfaction. It was found that suppression of unpleasant emotions decreases job satisfaction and the amplification of pleasant emotions increases job satisfaction. There are two personality factors related to job satisfaction, alienation and locus of control. Employees who have an internal locus of control and feel less alienated are more likely to experience job satisfaction, job involvement, and organizational commitment. The characteristics like high self-esteem, self-efficacy, and low neuroticism are also related to job satisfaction. That is the end of Section 4.